Uh, he might even jump so as not to dislodge yellow and to leave yellow in that nasty position. Where it's so difficult for it to get up to the next hoop. No, he didn't bother with that. Yeah, he decided discretion was the better part there. Just make the hoop, get down to hoop six. He makes it look so easy. That was just an effortless shot. Seemed to come out of the hoop quicker than it went into it. Again, he's probably looking for the wire for the hoop between yellow and blue. I don't think he's quite got it though. But black is hanging around down near that hoop, ready to clear yellow. So he's again in a strong, strong position. Oh. So he's just checking to see if that little nudge wired them. I don't think it did, but we'll find out because if he shoots at yellow, they're not wired. Perhaps they are because he's not shooting at yellow, is he? No, he is. Yes. He was shooting to put yellow in the place where he wanted it. He's... Yellow is yeah. now wired on blue by red, I think. It wouldn't surprise me. Yep. What would happen then? Uh, it was a... Hoop. No, no, went off went to the side, but he through. hit one ball, hit the next ball, hit the next ball. As so they do. He, uh, he, yeah, he, the yellow hit the red, hit the blue. And so now Robert's looking to show us his next trick. Gee, what a trick. Trying to move both of them. Moving both of them. And he did, and... And he put his ball in front of the hoop as well. Yeah. That's genuinely is what he meant to do. You have to say. Yeah. He, Robert wears a magic hat when he plays croquet. No, no. He just wears that the sheen of somebody who's been working at it over the years. I think he practices He thinks and he practices. That's it. He must have hit all these shots so many times. He could be an android from the future. I think that's unlikely. <laughs> so he did get a bit of yellow <laughs> there, but is it an, is it enough to to save him from getting rocade? Not. Okay, so now we've had an update on the hoop score. It's four hoops to Robert Fletcher. So no games. They're on. They've just started their match. Zero games each, and it's four hoops to Robert and one hoop to Steve Harden. So Steve going to take the hoop on here? He is. You'd think so. Ambitious. Well, I guess if you want to uh, compete with Robert Fletcher, they're the hoops that you have to take on and run because that's the kind of opportunities he allows you to have is 
only half ones. Mm. We're getting a comment, how come the Fletchers are in the same block? It seems rather sad, but of course, there is only one block in playing each other. There aren't, there isn't any playoffs. There's no round, knockout round after this. These players who are playing here are the top ranked eight players in the country. And so they do include two of the Fletchers. Probably it would include three of the Fletchers if Greg were around. But certainly two. And so they must be in the same block because they are both very highly ranked players. But there's no playoff. Do you think there's they've no, played each There's no further competition. Sorry. I'm sure it's not the first time they've played each other though. Oh, no, no. Oh. <laughs> and we see Richard. Oh, Robert. Uh, Robert. <laughs> I don't know where Richard came from. Is he, he, I was so shocked that he missed the hoop. I could, his name just went out of my brain. Okay, so now yellow going up to the hoop, very close to the hoop. Well, I think red tried to promote yellow in front of the hoop, but it didn't quite go as well in practice as it did in his brain. Mm -hmm. But a bit of a difficult shot for black to get the hoop. It's quite an acute angle. Yeah, I, I don't think Robert is looking to make the hoop here. He's looking to um, do clear red and probably get in a position where yellow can't hit it. That would be my guess, but Robert is by far smarter at croquet than I am. Yeah, it was very instructive to watch Robert. He's just staying in position. He can get yellow wherever yellow goes to. Yellow hasn't got a great many choices of where to go to because it's on the leg, so it has to come out. It can't play towards the leg. So it's yellow to play out with the camera. Yes, okay. Oh no, it's not on the leg. I'm wrong. It's not touching the leg. It can come in front. Oh, yeah, with black so sitting there well ominously. Out. Well, yeah, black and was sitting there, sitting there ominously. Sitting there ominously as well. Both of them threatening balls. They might be seven yards apart, but they're threatening. So blue's gone in a fishing position because it's it'll make it a difficult decision for yellow to decide what to what to do. And red couldn't see it. Oh, look at that curve. No. So no one wants to be in front of the hoop and be the one to get walloped off to the boundary. And so we've Generating got an in off. Perhaps. An array of, yeah, so we've got an array of balls about two yards from the hoop. Getting rid of blue. I need to get rid of blue. Yeah. So Robert here will show him how it's done. Red well away, blue within spitting distance. Oh, 
Ooh, I would think black is going to take, yeah, well, no, black's going to take position and uh, look to let blue deal with red. But Unless Robert thinks think he can black's run this, going to he's, go he's into having the a hoop. look. I think he's going to go into the hoop. I think he's going yeah, into it the certainly hoop. Looks I don't that know way. he's going through, but I think he's going in. Ah, nicely. So now, where is yellow? Because the other good thing with that shot is that blue can nick the black through that hoop and head off over to one back. Or seven, as we might call it in this game. Oh, I think he knocked that out through? slightly. I think it even it nudged, nudged it out, it, perhaps. Mm, I think it did hit it. Maybe. But it's changed it uh, Robert's. Yeah, it's changed Robert's plan because he can't be certain of a, a rush peel through there. So he's sent red back. Oh, you are talking like an association said. player. <laughs> <laughs> Rush peel. Well, the, they were talking about rush peels this morning in the under 21s as well. So, oh, yeah, they probably got some AC commentators on the under 21s too. Yeah, I and think of course, there are many people who think association both. croquet is a very great game and everyone should know the language of. So, that's perfectly fine. So, that takes Robert to 5 1. Yeah, well in control. This is, of course, the first and a best of three, so it's um, got a bit of a way to go. And it's Robert has not been be. a, a golf croaky. Sorry. You go. No, you go on. Oh, I was going to say that I Robert is say... A, such a wonderful expo <laughs> a wonderful exponent of of croquet that it's great to be able to to watch him put on a show for us here. As and I just give him a compliment, and he misses his clearance. <laughs> and I was going to say that um, he's not been competing in golf croquet all that long. He his handicap was, of course, always going to be very low because he's world number one in association croquet. So when he started playing, he he was already admirable. But he's been playing it, I think, for maybe a year or so, before, two years before COVID, maybe four years. It's, it's, not, it's not as long as um, many of the players in this competition. Um, he's been an association player for so long. But all those skills from association come to bear on um, on golf croquet and the long rookies that you do in association to get into play are very useful if you've got a long clearance to make in golf croquet. I should check and see when his first ranked competition was. So yellow had a shot at the hoop and failed. So now we'll see blue have a shot at the hoop. And it got rejected as well. Robert walking up, looking angrily at the hoop as if how dare you not let my ball through. So red pushes blue out, which was the ball just played. So Robert putting his black ball in so the clock
clearance is to one of the short boundaries. So if yellow clears it, it's just going to the north boundary. And if red clears it, it's only going to go to the west boundary. Okay, so looking at Robert's record in ranked games in golf croquis, he had four ranked games in 2010 and four in 2011. So that was in his mid-teens and he won all of them. And then he didn't play again until 2018. And he played 13 games in 2018, 14 in 2019, 14 in 2020, 31 in 2021 and 55 in 2022, of course, uh, games 2020 and 2021, and also to some extent in 22, were a bit reduced by the COVID restrictions. And he's currently ranked number nine in the world. And he's the highest ranked player in this competition. The next ranked player is Gary Phipps, whom we were watching just before. who is number 57, so 9 to 57 is quite a big difference. So after yellow shot and missed at the black, there was no then pressure on Robert to have to do anything with the red. He can just put two balls in front. And there they are. But black, which is next to play, has been cleared. So it's all to do again. Yeah, but if yellow had taken position there, then it would have forced Robert, if he wanted to protect his black, to hit it red. Whereas once yellow yes. went into space, he could just take position yes. on the blue and let uh, yellow yes. shoot from the car park at it. Which is what's happening. I just wondered why Malcolm is not on this list. I think he may have not played enough games in the recent past. And so just like the last game, Robert's got the chance to run hoop seven and make it six one, get a good position at hoop eight and start thinking about his sandwiches. No, no, no. He's got two, another, at least one more game to play. It's the best. Oh history. yeah, of course. Oh yeah. We can't be thinking about sandwiches yet. No, no, no. They're not giving any of the players time off for lunch. So they have to snatch their, oh. their, um, Sandwiches in between rounds. They certainly don't get slave compulsory breaks at one o'clock like they did in the McRob. Gee, gee, the the tournament mm -hmm. manager here is a slave drivers. Well, they've we got, got to keep the puns entertained on the live stream. Players. Yeah, and, no, we, no, and we've got the live stream players. people to keep entertained. Forty-eight players on twelve courts. They've got two games going on on every court, so every game tends to get a bit delayed by the other game it's playing with. They're trying to get yeah. s seven rounds going in three days. It's a lot of games, seven best of threes. Yeah, meanwhile, Robert ran that hoop. Games. Yeah, meanwhile, Robert ran that last hoop to within two feet of hoop eight. Yes. Yellow's going to go close, but not close it enough. Did, so that's game. And that's game one for Robert. Robert. Exactly. 
and Brett McCarty and Gary Phipps are on this court playing the second colours. So we might look at them now. Ooh. In that whole series of points that we watched, two thirds of a game, I think we saw Robert make maybe two mistakes. It was just a magnificent display because it seemed like he never was doing anything spectacular, but at the same time was the one that was just always managed to have hoop control and was forcing his opponent into into being the one clearing constantly. So his his control of his clearances especially is really allows him to get control of those hoops so tightly because he can make a ball go to the boundary but keep his ball within his seven yard striking distance. And off we go again. So with not too much else on offer, black is, uh, sorry, red is going to see if he can. Oh, that was in the middle of the two staunchions, but just decided after poking its head through that that wasn't fair, wasn't going to go through. And so now Robert playing the black ball. Looks like he could be aiming at the hoop here as well. Mm, and okay. a similar result. It also. Yes. <laughs> yeah, that, that hoop rejected that ball. He certainly gave it a bang. Now that hoop is a bit skew whiff. And yellow is in the jaws, and that looks good because black and blue aren't in particularly good angles to either jump or clear that. Robert's going to need to use his magic hat. N no. Not even his magic, magic hat works. Magic hat didn't do anything. No. Nah. Are you just going to block? I think you're going to block. Uh, Robert might see this as an opportunity to get his black up to two back if he feels he can't do anything with the yellow. He could uh, hit the, the red on the right side and go up towards two. Or we might see a jump if he's feeling like being spectacular. The way he's holding his mallet looks like a jump. So get ready, Mr. Replay Man. This could be a, another special jump shot like we saw in the last game. Mm. Nope. But he made the yellow shot harder. 
No. Very slightly well, harder. Very slightly harder. And so a good start from Steve, the one to start that he would have wanted. See if he can put some more pressure on Robert in this game. And he nicely got down with his yellow to the next hoop. Because if you can run that hoop and get down to the next hoop in, while running it, it's it's basically like getting a not just the hoop that you've run, but also another half of a hoop because you're the, the first person down to the next one. Although you don't want to go putting your second ball behind the hoop because that sort of nullifies <laughs> that that good yellow position because ideally what he would have loved was red to be in front of the hoop and to clear the blue with the yellow, but that didn't occur. So now we've got Robert with the black coming down. Might still be looking to clear blue with yellow. Ooh. Ooh. Across it goes to disrupt the two Queenslanders on the next court. I think we got Ross Rilly and Bob Martin, the two Queenslanders up there doing battle in Victoria. There's people from all over Australia come to Melbourne for this. So that was yellow attempting the hoop, I think. Yeah, he certainly took that shot quite quickly. Yeah, no second invitations needed there. And again, the other game has to field the balls. For people who are wondering what that black piping is in the background, it is actually the kind of pipe you put underground as to as part of your drainage system. But it's commonly used as a barrier to stop balls doing exactly that to running between courts. Because if you don't have some kind of barrier, they can go, could go the full length of this whole complex. When we had the so Egyptians here for in. the World Golf Croquet Championships, they, um, they had to put a fence in to stop the balls going up into the clubhouse. So that yellow ball was a lot better than the red one because the red one was in court side of the hoop. When he's clearing black here, black can only be cleared as far as a seven foot boundary, which for the top players is a short clearance. So anyone in the, in the top echelon of play will take on a seven yard shot and expect to hit it eight or nine times out of 10. Whereas if the red was on the other side of the hoop, the, cl the cl side closer to the boundary, it could clear it all the way to the other end of the court, giving the opponent a shot from the car park. So there we go. We see that it just couldn't get cleared far enough to protect the yellow. Whereas now that shot has got a long walk to go and hit it back in. And you didn't queer his pitch by calling it that he was going to hit it either. No commentators close that time. Yeah, so for, for the players at home... predicting if, those things. Yeah, so for the players at home, if you're approaching a hoop, you're always better to be slightly long or slightly to the, the nearest boundary than to be short because then it allows you to clear the opposition into the open court rather than to the boundary. So here we get Robert gets no, to Robert. have a shot here. And he'll want to run this right down to four. Well, he didn't. No, he 
He says, oh, it might have been a bit loose. Oh, we notice it's got a red top on. There's been a bit of discussion about this in croaky circles lately. Why is there a red top on hoop three? Conventionally, the red top is on hoop 12, which is the end of the normal game in first to seven golf croaky, end of the hoops in association croaky. But there is a view that in golf croaky, the last hoop, if you get six all, you have to go and play hoop three again. So called hoop 13 at that point. That's why the red top is on it. Yeah, as long as they put the blue one in the right place. So you better tell the listeners what the right place is for the blue one. The first hoop. The the um I can understand why the golf croquet uh, puts the red hoop at hoop three rather than at hoop I suppose you'd call it hoop five. Um hoop cause, twelve. Yeah, because in both games they're um the final hoop that is run. But it's just about the orientation of the court. So the blue hoop is, as we look at it, at the bottom left of the screen. And that just signifies the first hoop. And then from there, you can figure out the order of the hoops. And that's Ooh. just trickled through. Just far enough to be able to hit it across to the next hoop. So that's yeah, two all. So and here we have a replay yes, of that little trickling through shot. Yes, very nice. Yep. So it goes black. Steve will be quite. Steve will be quite happy to be. At two all, after four hoops here. And a. Precision approach shot there from, Robert. They're the ones you love when you just plop them, a foot out right in front of the hoop and it forces the opposition to shoot at it, which he's done successfully. So Steve will be doing a little mm -hmm. fist pump having done that. But Robert has gone too far. So here we go. Here's an opportunity for Steve to put some pressure on Robert on this hoop here. At the top level, it can be fine margins. So a single shot that is just goes slightly away can swing the whole balance of a hoop or even a whole game. Oh, wow. That is a beautiful shot. looks as if if he knocks blue the most likely thing is for it to go into red into black and stay put he can't afford to hit it well, he must have decided the black mm. wasn't a threat to run the hoop so he's just put well no black's not next no but it's also not a threat to run the hoop so he didn't need to Black or blue? Solve a problem. Blue. I think you mean blue. I think you mean blue. Blue's next. Yeah, but black wasn't in a, a running position, so he didn't need to sort of worry about having blue clear his ball. Uh, do you think? Yeah, that's why he took position comfortably. I'm just thinking black is in the hoop running position. Yeah, it'd be it'd be a very good shot if he makes it through and you wouldn't put it past Robert. So Robert's cleared the next ball in. No, he hasn't. He's cleared yellow. Red next ball to play is yeah. red. Yeah, yeah. He cleared the the next ball in. What? So he cleared he the cleared ball that just came in. Yeah. Nice hoop. So he let red take on that hoop. And he got he got punished for 
he was letting Red take on that hoop because if Red had missed it, uh, Robert then was all over that hoop. But Steve mm-hmm. was not going to have any of that tomfoolery and was like, you're going to let me have a, a more difficult shot. I'm going to make it on you. So now Steve's got the lead here. Is this going through? Oh, so close to going no. through, but it's a juicy in off for black though. But red no. will get to play next. Red can get rid of black. Mm. Yeah. This is a glorious opportunity here for for Steve to really start to turn the screws on Robert. You're just going the little shot to put it behind the hoop so that it, to get it yellow, black basically will need to run the hoop. It might just have enough poking out the side, but it won't be too much of a ball to hit. Looks like the wind's getting up down there a little bit too. I think we can hear it. Oh, and w- try it. whatever it was that Robert Robert was aiming at, he didn't hit. <laughs> it might have even come back off the rebound and hit something, but it definitely didn't hit it the first time, but he gave it a good old wallop. Maybe he was trying to hit the, the hoop out of the ground and cartwheel it across the court. He's decided he can't run this hoop. Bit of a waste to do that long shot then. Yeah, I think if Robert knew he was going to do that, he might have chosen differently that last shot. But I guess it just proves that Robert isn't an android from the future because if he was, he would have known. So Steve knows that there's no point popping in front of the hoop there because Blue just would have collected him in a stop shot. So instead he's put Blue down to the boundary and kept his red ball nice and close. So he's got really good control over this hoop here. The key stroke for for uh, Steve will be this yellow. he want to get this yellow right in front of the hoop if he can get this yellow in front of the hoop red is going to be all over black if it's not cleared yeah yeah as you say Mm, it's, it seems a little bit wider than he perhaps he might have liked. But red will clear black and then, or maybe the yellow it has got a good shot, you would think. And something else is happening. Over the hoop. Yeah, that was, was a brave a brave shot. Especially with black and blue 
right in front as well. So Robert's not going to knock back this opportunity of a one and a half yard hoop shot from dead in front. Yeah. Oh, smooth. So let's come back to level three all. Yeah, that was a big hoop because if Steve could have grabbed that hoop, he would have had Robert at, at four two. But as it is, it's three all. Mm. Yellow to play. Yellow might hit red across, do you think? And it's definitely got the opportunity to. The thing with these no, is that with no, and especially as the first player, promoting a ball can often annul your advantage if it doesn't come off. Gives correctly. you a wonderful advantage if it does come off. Yeah, but because you have the first approach at the hoop, you already have a significant advantage. So Oh, Robert, <laughs> not missing. He would have probably he, preferred he was those gonna, two balls the other way around. Yeah, I was going to say, if he was going to complain, he would have liked to have split his ball to the north boundary, but at that distance, he would be satisfied just clearing it. Steve ball, Steve's red ball looks like it went just a little bit further than he would have liked. Been definitely getting up. Hats blowing off as well yeah. as shirts flapping. Yeah, and both those red and black balls went a little bit further. Maybe they've got affected by the wind to, to push them just a, a foot or, or two more than the players otherwise would have expected. Mm, could be. So what do we think with yellow? Is he going to do and have another brave shot and go for the hoop? Well, you would expect him to, judging on his last brave shot, but he might have learnt not to do that and to approach. So, no, it's a shot at the hoop. I think red has got quite a good clearing shot on black. It's black's not in the way of the hoop. It's not in the line. You wouldn't send it into the hoop. Yeah, Robert is You'd deciding to clear all probably position. position. Position, I'd say. Position. There we go. Yeah. Because he's positioned it there because yellow, unless it's going to cut it quite a, a lot, he's only going to be able to clear that to the north boundary. Another go at the hoop. Well, so now, does black get rid of yellow? Yes, I think so. You would imagine that uh, Robert's going to be backing himself to make the blue hoop. Yeah, so he's decided that that hoop is eminently makeable. And if he puts yellow down the other end of the court and look, looks, I was going to say, looking to wire it maybe behind the hoop, it didn't quite get that, but it's still going to take a excellent shot to hit from down there. Which is an excellent shot. Ah, oh, it just it's rolled off just to the left. Shot. Yeah, I yeah think it but is it's a it. long hoop. It's not yeah, quite no, blocking it's... it, I think, but I think it's enough to make him think, no, I don't think I'll go for it this time because yellow has got a very good shot. I don't know. I mean, 
what what do you think if you're Robert Fletcher? You have so many so many possibilities okay. that you can do. It looks like a jump. That's a clearance and stay put. It's a beautiful clearance. And of course now red will clear blue and then black will have to come and clear red. Yeah, but the the thing is that uh, red can only clear blue to the near boundary here. And so Robert will be confident that he can clear that red into the onto the far side of the court. Mm. And certainly yellow will not go for go for blue. It might take position. It won't go for blue. I wouldn't be sure whether no. yellow can see black. I'd say not. No, blue was playing in to see if it could get up. Yeah. A little bit short. There's not too much wasted power in a Robert Fletcher shot. He cleared that ball and he cleared it to the boundary and didn't have to clear it any further. He just was like, yep, I only need to hit it to the line. And so there you go. He's hit it to within five centimetres of the line. Yeah. Got it. Oh, shot. So that stamping on the hoop suggests to me he's going for the hoop. He's not going to go for yellow. He's, which has got a shot. He's going to go for the hoop. You yeah, have a second hoop. go at the hoop. Yeah, it, it hit the stanchion, but because of the, the lovely follow through that Robert has, it had a, if you watch the replay, you'll see that it, it hits the, the leg and then has a second go at the hoop. It bounces out, but then the spin on the ball takes it back into the jaws. So um, as my first coach said, he's... he's got to he's got to try a jump. There's not too much else really he's to do. To. I think Robert's just coming for the clip. No longer a fault to hit the clip, but it can just deflect the jump. And we're very well placed to see whether it runs. Ah, uh, well, we can all see that it didn't run. And red, not in a very good place to hit it out. No. And on these long hoops, getting in the jaws is especially advantageous. Assuming, of course, you've got course. no, you're not giving the opponent a, a jump shot or a, a clearance from behind because you can run it all the way down to the next hoop with nice control. Oh, maybe, has, what? Has that ball gone through? Because he no, played that. I don't that, think so. Because that, they didn't yeah, play that red ball looked like it, it looked like at least the red ball was. I think there's a yeah, point. Yeah, so maybe that on. was, yeah, so maybe that was a little bit of a mistake. And like the last game, Roberts got that ball after running. Hoop seven. Oh, he sent both his balls within. right down to. Yeah, but he's got that that ball after running hoop seven to within a foot or two of hoop eight, like last game, and so yeah, he's bought. Beautiful he's shot. got a two for one offer. Yeah, two for one offer there. So four three to Robert, and Steve has been sent with both his balls to the penalty spot because they went. 
well actually I think past Troop 4 so well beyond the halfway line so they've been gone to the, they've been sent to the penalty spot where he gets two goes to get the weight right and I think he's to play yellow I think there was Hooper's run by black yeah he's, and he's black is the ball black. just tucked in front of the hoop uh, he, he's got red as well Well, as an attempt to move black, that wasn't particularly successful. So now Robert is thinking about the secondary game by the look. Yeah, the, that, when Steve had Robert at 3-2 on hoop six and he took that brave shot at the hoop that he missed, that could be something that he looks back on in regret because since that shot, Robert's really taken the game by the scruff of the neck because he's in a prime position here to go 5-3 up after being down 2-5. So. No, no, 2-3. Two, two, three. Two, three. But he was, he was behind, which is not his preferred position, you would think. Okay, so red's coming from the penalty spot, and I think if he hits black, he's quite likely to hit it onto blue, and then black won't move. And he hasn't hit it at all. Oh, dear. Black to play. And through the hoop. So that takes him to 5 3, nice and handy lead as we go across to the other side. Nice replay on this hoop. Yes. That's a decent ball. Gives him and options. so far, Robert has Robert has won four all four of the matches he's played, and he has won them all two 0 He hasn't gone to a third in any of them. And we can see why in the display that he's put on in these past two games. So we can see it's not impossible to take a hoop off him. People have done no. That. No, he's been consistent and, and tactically excellent rather than being spectacularly playing spectacularly. <laughs> but that's his style is to yeah. is just to do all all the the things execute all the things that he does just so consistently well. Now, I would say, oh, no. He's saying, so he's, blue's he's blocked from be... the hoop, I'm going to go for the hoop. And Excellent. he's got the hoop. Well done. Five, four. And I think so he's not going... blue is a little bit hampered by red on its journey up to the next hoop. Yeah, think? probably red and, and perhaps even see. yellow. But Steve's certainly not going down without without a fight. No, absolutely not. We could be in for a little bit of a delay here because it looks like the other game is on hoop two. So we've Oops. had the two games Oops. come come into a head on collision here. Hoop two or hoop three? Should we hoop three? Uh, sorry, hoop three. I I struggle with counting. You know what you were saying. 
You mean they're both going? Yeah, yeah, I knew. Yeah, I knew what I was saying. saying. No one else did that. We knew that. We knew that. We knew you were saying they were both going for the same hoop, and because the secondary started first, they have to wait. The primaries have to wait. What we call the primaries, the secondaries being the green and brown. So this has taken a long time to get only two hoops. And with hoop shots like that, that could be why. It does give advantage to the so, blue, uh, to the blue, to the pink and the white now because green went careering off after hitting the outside staunch in there. So this is we'll see another shot. Tipson we've seen before against Brett McCarty. They're one, this, one hoop all. So that goes sailing through. Nice isn't shot. It? It, I think it did because he reached for his pocket. It was one of those ones that was such ah. a good, clean shot that you thought, did that just miss the hoop totally? But no, it seems like it was the perfect shot. So, so at least that, that solves our traffic jam. It does. Mm. So now two... That was two on that game, but we're not tracking that game. We will come back to the Fletcher and Harden game, which is the primary game. And this is Robert just seeing what he can do to get past red to get up to what in his game is hoop 10. Oh, yes. So I would say all the primary balls probably come up and then the secondary balls will play down. It's not quite over the traffic jam. You have to, they have to um, go past each other. It's like having people using the same piece of road, really. You don't keep to the left and avoid each other. You're actually driving towards each other straight down the middle of the road. That's very nice. That's a little far. Yeah, if Robert can put and a good black said, in here, he's, he's in a prime position to clear into the open court. He's a bit far away from, from red, really. Yeah, that that shot on the black, is. I would have expected a closer shot into the hoop from Robert there, but um, maybe he's thinking something that's just a few levels above us, or maybe it was just one of his rare miss shots. It's hard to know. Is he going to go for the hoop, do you think? He's looking like it. It looks as if he thinks this might be the winning hoop. This will get him the match. If he, if, no, it wouldn't. He'd would take him to the 6-4. Yeah, it'd be 6-4. Would not get him the match. But he must... Be six, four. Yeah, he must... Oh, what a hoop. Yeah, I think they'll show us that one again. Just whack straight through. Here we go. Here we go. Slow motion, I hope. I went straight through. Yeah. Wonderful. And there's red very nicely positioned in front of hoop 11. <laughs> until it was blocked by black. Must be fun playing as well as this. So Robert could be coming over to have a look to see if he thinks he can get a clearance, a good clearance on the black given how close they are together. Bit of a worry. You would think that red was no. He but red. He's not red. Red plays before black. Red would get the good yeah. clearance on black. So Robert has yeah, to so be thinking. Okay, if red clears black, that leaves yellow in a hoop running position. Where am I going to put blue? Yeah. 
He doesn't really want to clear red. He wants to get in the hoop running position between blue and the yellow and the hoop. Something like that, yeah. Yeah. Wow. Uh, these balls might just be touching. No. No, no, they're not touching. Okay, we can see now that they're not touching. Very nice, helpful camera angle there. Because if they're touching, of course, then you wouldn't do a, a make a fault by hitting your ball that then rebounds onto your mallet off the other ball. I think they're just calling to get it watched because it hit. Oh, look, there's two lots of people with mallets up at the same time. One referee and two calls. That's interesting. I'll just wait for this one. So what, it, that's, here, they're coming to this one first. And this is the tournament referee, John Vantetup. Um, he is, he's been called, so he's marking the balls. So this is in case the, um, the ball, the red ball bounces back off the black ball, goes onto the mallet and hit, and the mallet hits it therefore twice, which is a fault. There's not too many better people to adjudicate on this than John van der Tau. And John says, no, that was fine. That was not a fault. John has done so much measurement of this. He's really familiar with what, how you can tell whether a fault has been committed. Yeah. He's done, he's slow mode the camera and he's watched the ball movements and he, you can look it up on YouTube. He will give you the percentages that if the balls travel in this different direction from each other, the likelihood that there's been a double tap. Yeah, you don't even need to have seen the shot. You can just know where the balls end up and be quite certain about what's occurred. Yeah, you can be so certain yes, if in you some situations. Seen... So it's just probability in others. Yeah. So, so, yeah. yeah. so if you haven't Sometimes seen the it's video, just probability. it's well worth finding. Yeah, it is. Definitely. He's got a lot of good videos, John Van der Tarn. So yeah, now sorry. what's he doing? That looked as if jumping was going to, going to happen, but it looks, uh, looks... He wouldn't be jumping over the hoop. He, he can't see yellow. No. And so he's... There's the issue. He's been popped into a place where he can't see yellow. Yeah, it was a... We didn't realise the the precision of that stop shot on black until mm. we can see Robert um, effectively giving up on the shot and going to halfway ready for hoop 12. He is, isn't he? He's saying, no, I can't do that. That can't be done. Do what you like, he says. So he doesn't give himself another option in case yellow bounces off the hoop and comes out. Well, he can he make it with blue. blue. But if he clears blue, stop shots on blue. Ah. So, yeah, okay. Now he's going to make it off the blue. He's going to make sure it's gone in far enough. In an association um, tournament, you would see the referee after every match go around and bang in all the hoops to make sure they're not wobbly. I, I haven't seen that in this. You can see Robert really prefers nice firm hoops. And yeah. that's game, set and match. It is. They're shaking hands in the proper way. Um, and we can we can so see why Robert well is undefeated in this tournament and hasn't dropped a game because as soon as an opponent makes a mistake, he capitalizes to the full extent. 
So there he does. was a it was a seven four game, but there was a couple of key moments where 